Hi guys, this is Namakia. I want to start by apologising that this video is kind of late. Um, I had some issues with the editing, being that the app I use will only let you increase the speed times four. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, this took three hours to draw. And so if I only increase the speed times four, that's going to come to just under an hour, which I thought might be a bit much. And so obviously I saved the shortened down version and then I sped that up again. However, this didn't really work because I missed a bit off the front. No, nope, that's not what happened. Actually, first I... First time I tried to save it with the same file name and it deleted the original. So I had to recreate that. And then I did it missing a bit off the front. Now, the point is, I got here eventually and we now have um, a video, which is good. And hopefully the right speed and hopefully there aren't too many editing errors and... Good luck, I'm sorry if this messed up. This is a speed paint of a, the character, Sir Lancelot. You've probably heard of him. He was uh, boasted as one of Arthur's, King Arthur's greatest knights, and he's known as a true romantic, which is utter baloney because he was supposedly endlessly in love with Queen Guinevere, Arthur's wife. So yeah, su super romantic hitting on your king's wife. That, and you're super sensible as well. I mean, you couldn't have picked anybody else. Like, anybody else slightly less likely to hang you for treason? No. Okay, so <laughs> he falls in love with Queen Guinevere. And everyone talked about how romantic their love was and the secret messages, and which is also a bit dumb because I'm not sure quite why people why that was considered romantic at the time, but it was. And actually there was a minstrel at the time, I believe, who said that uh, the truest love could only ever be for someone else's wife, which is dumb. Anyway, not only that, but uh, King Lancelot was also the father to Sir Galahad, who was the one who completed the Holy Grail and considered the purest knight. This is also kind of complete tosh, because when you stop to think about it, <laughs> Guinevere wasn't Galahad's mother, so he cheated on her anyway, despite, you know, her being his one true love and all that nonsense. So, Lancelot, bit of an idiot. Um, French knight, so he was the son of King Ban. I'm just spurting information at you now. Point is, he was a bit of a bit of a douche, bit crazy in the head, and but he was toasted as one of the best knights. And to be fair, if you read the original poems and the original um, text in which he was first written about, he does come across as a good knight. He rarely ever loses a fight. Um, and you can see that he was, in terms of a warrior, quite good. But in terms of knightliness, in terms of chivalry, I have my doubts. The reason I'm doing this character design is because I'm considering, I'm not gonna say I'm actually writing a webcomic because you probably saw what happened in the last one. I've, took those, I've taken those videos down. I was considering writing something, the project just felt too big and I wasn't getting anywhere and I kind of ran out of love with it. I might come back to it. So if you if you were looking forward to those, then I'm sorry, I might bring it back. But no, I'm considering writing, writing a webcomic um, about a different knight to Lancelot named Sir Dinadan. He's a knight who is considered unusual because he's quite sassy. He's not like the best knight. He, he isn't bad, but he's one of the few knights in Sir Thomas Mallory's version of the King Arthur legend, whoever bothers to turn down a fight. And he's considered quite witty, and for some reason in Arthur legends, knights will see each other in their armour and they'll never have any idea who it is, despite the fact that they were probably carrying flags, shields, etc. with their symbol on, and they're always like, Hail Knight, who art thou? And they already know each other and have known each other for years. And Dinadan's one of the few who actually tends to recognise people. Now, reading up on Dinadan, you discover that his two closest friends were Lancelot and Sir Tristan. And Sir Tristan's a bit of a plonker like Lancelot, in that he was also in love with someone else's queen, Queen Isildt, who was married to King Mark of Cornwall. But in that case, there was a love potion involved, so I suppose it's it's understandable that he went a bit crazy. Anyway, the point is I'm planning to write a comic, which is just, you know, a couple of short stories um, about Sir Dinadan and about him meeting knights such as Lancelot, you know, because they do become friends, um, they're known to get along quite well, and basically making fun of the idiocy that is some of the rules of knighthood and chivalry. And that's kind of where that was going, and so when I was doing it, I wanted to be able to show character arcs, obviously, and so I wanted my Lancelot to be 
to look like he was a bit full of himself. He has the shiniest armour, he has the floatiest hair. I was gonna make him very blonde, but I did a vote on my Instagram and people preferred the brown haired version, so I kind of went for a sandy colour in the middle, because I still wanted him to be blonde. Which, no offence to blonde people, I used to be blonde when I was a kid. Um, but I kind of, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, very stereotypical, handsome man. And I kind of wanted to be able to show him as, he is a very good fighter, but I want to show him as a character who could be fun and could, you know, throughout the stories, relaxes a bit more and worries less about whether or not he looks knightly and acts knightly and does actually get in on some of the jokes and, you know, enjoys not being serious for change. But he's also meant to have that edge of he's ridiculously in love with Guinevere and he's convinced himself that he'll never, you know, he can't ever love another woman because that's kind of what they were told in those days. You know, if you profess your love to a maiden you believe fairer than all the others, she should be the only maiden you ever love. And I don't know much about Guinevere, I haven't really read a lot on her because in most of the books they focus on the knights and not the ladies because sexism and all that. Um, so I don't know an awful lot about Guinevere, but in some of the other more modern stories I've read, particularly the Squire's Tales, which are kind of what inspired me to do this in the first place, Guinevere is kind of seen as a little bit shallow. She cares for her husband, King Arthur, but she's, you know, entranced by Lancelot's handsomeness and his skill and the fact that he treats her in all the ways that, you know, knights have told they're supposed to. And so I'm hoping that also throughout the story, Lancelot will begin to realise that maybe he should have actually got to know Guinevere before deciding that he would, you know, die for her. Obviously, I want to show the, like, kind of strength of will and stuff, and I don't think, and I think Lancelot will always care about her and always, you know, put her first, because he made a vow, and knights and their vows. There's a very, very funny bit in Squire's Tales, um, in the book on Dinner Den, actually, which I'm not going to put in my comic, I'm trying to avoid that book completely so I don't copyright anything, um, where Sir Tristan make, takes a vow of silence, saying that he'll never talk about um, the love potion or his love for Isolde at all. And um, every person he meets up, he goes up to and says, um, and tells them about this, about this vow he's taken. He's like, yeah, yeah, yes, I've taken a vow of silence, and therefore I can never talk about my great love for Isolde. Well, how could I want to talk about her? And, you know, I can't possibly tell you my name, for what is Sir Tristan without Isolde? And it's just really dumb, because if you make a vow of silence, keep silent. And so, um, and so the, you know, the knights took their vows seriously. It was something that was, he said, and, you know, in, whilst we don't know how the knights may have acted outside of court, well, we do because of the stories, but the stories were told for the court. And so I like the idea that knights outside of court are a bit more chill and they kind of, you know, just take the piss out of everything a bit more and that when they go back to court they obviously tell their stories as if they were you know the great poems that and epilogues and chronicles and stuff that we've come to know but outside of court they're a bit more just like eh. <laughs> you know nothing's quite as grand as it seems uh, and that includes Lancelot. Obviously he has to put on the impression of being very grand. So one of the things I did when I was designing his character is I've got briefed out designs for Dinadan and Tristan as well. And I like the idea that before Tristan took his love potion he was a bit more calm. And so I was trying to decide how much armour I should give each of them. Because armour is something that's very difficult and complicated to draw. I learned to do most of this by watching um, by watching modern TV, um, what's it called, Modern History TV channel on YouTube. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at how all the armor plates fit together and stuff like that. I also spent a lot of time trying to draw horses, as you're going to see me fail at miserably now, because horses are so difficult. But I spent a lot of time looking at how the different plates fit together and trying to decide how much armor I was going to give each character, because armor is kind of difficult to draw and it's a lot of effort. Um, and I didn't want to have to sit there every panel drawing tons and tons of armour. And I'd already decided that Dinadan doesn't really care about fighting too much. He maybe has armour, but I was going to give him, you know, he can, he can have a chainmail chain mail shirt, maybe some boots, um, and, you know, a helmet that he keeps in his bag, but he doesn't tend to use, because if he doesn't think it's worth the fight, he won't fight, because he's sensible and doesn't want to get stabbed. Um, Tristan, I was going to give it more, because Tristan is 
um, you know, toasted as a powerful warrior. So I needed him to have some armor, otherwise he would look a bit, you know, he wouldn't look the part as much as he was supposed to. And so Tristan had to have some armor, but he didn't need tons. Um, and then Lancelot is obviously, Lancelot tries to be that perfect knight, repeatedly. Um, in fact, I believe the only reason stated why he wasn't able to achieve the Holy Grail and why, he, why his son did instead was because his love for Guinevere was too adulterous. Which makes sense, because she was married. Um, but that's what tries to be that perfect knight. And so I needed him to look the part, even if I was going to reduce the number of bits I drew. Um, and so I have kind of, you know, fiddled with things a bit. For instance, I know that knights didn't wear capes whilst they were fighting. However, I figured giving him a big grand cape would cover up the confusing bits on some of the chest plate, save me some time. It also mean I can make him look very fancy without having to have engravements or paintings on the armour itself. That would make the armour fancier than it already was. And so while he is a bit fiddly, um, that's that. The next thing I had to do was I <laughs> decided that for all of the knights who you will who I'll regularly have to draw on horses if I write this comic, I would draw a reference of them on their horse. And it's probably a good thing because horses are something that I've only recently learned to draw and I am not very good at them. So I figured I should at least try draw some horses um, and draw each of them on their horses. Now my horses aren't great and you're gonna see it when this is finished. I'm not really into horses. I'm hoping to get better. But in the process I also learned lots of things about how knights would hold lances, whether they'd have their sword with them, um, you know, what the roles of squires were. Um, from watching videos and talking to people I knew who knew a lot about this topic. Um, I'm still pretty bad at horses and I'm not going to claim I'm very good at them, but it was just the little things like this that I figured I should put the effort in to try and get looking good. Um, and I also think about, you know, what types of horse I want them to all have. Lancer obviously has to have a beautiful white stallion because he's just extra. Um, I... Obviously they'll all have like, you know, knightly, like, you know, I don't want to say war horses because they weren't war horses, but like, you know, knightly chargers, ch um, horses that were, you know, kind of buff horses. <laughs> Is there any better way to, I, I, I know the word, but I've forgotten it right now. So we're just going to scoop past that point. Um, I, mean, I wanted to draw them um, with horses that looked, you know, kind of cool. Um, but I also wanted to vary the horses, so for instance, Din Dan's gonna have kind of a smaller horse with like, um, I'm thinking of giving a horse with kind of like a patchy coat, it's not like all one colour or anything, um, so, you know, he looks kind of chill, um, <laughs> and then, uh, Lance Office has the beautiful white horse, and Tristan has a nice enough horse, but not one that's like fancy as Lancelot's. You can see the three levels of fanciness, um, but obviously as it goes on, I think I'm gonna reduce Lancelot's fanciness, at least in personality, and he's gonna become more chill, and hopefully in return Tristan's gonna go, as he starts to go crazy, because he's taking love potions, it's not like he can come to his senses and realise he doesn't love Isiot. He's kind of stuck with her. But the idea is that over time, obviously he becomes more crazy and more love obsessed, something he never said he said he would never be. And Lancelot kind of starts to realise that maybe, just maybe, hitting on the king's wife was a bad idea. So yeah, this is my um, this is my sheet, it's almost done. Oh wait, I still have to colour this guy in, don't I? <laughs> um, I haven't done any shading on any of these, I've got a palette. Uh, I'm not done shading because I'm gonna try and do some of the like comic shading. You know what you, you do, you fill the whole thing in grayscale and then you shade with like a dark grey or like a grey with a bit of red in to give it some colour and then you use layering techniques so that I can shade them all at once and not have to worry about switching colours and getting it in the right places and you know if I decide to put intricate patterns on things I can shade them without having to shade them separately. Um, if you have any tips on how to best draw comics to save time and colouring techniques you can use please comment down below because I would find that exceptionally useful. Um, and thank you for watching my video. Ha bye!